pumpkin as soon as the second I hit record you're gonna run away and put your pumpkin on camera for everyone pumpkin oh you think it's time for cookies that's going on you think it's time for a cookie party it's not time for a cookie party I'm sorry pumpkin hey what's up garden friends Jeff here tropical plant party how's everybody doing I hope you're good I am great looking at all the beautiful things from inside the house because it is really freaking cold outside it is a gorgeous day it's just really windy and 50 that's that doesn't feel nice uh, last week i was doing some things to prep for a cold snap and it's a it's been two days since i finished filming that video and some things have happened there have been a few changes since that video the forecast changed it was, they said 38 now it's saying 33 the tv says 39 but my weather apps say 33 and 34 so I've been pulling some things inside, particularly things that have flowers on them because those would die off and I don't want any of my buds or spikes, which are hard to see. There's a little spike there. The cold will just, that'll kill that off. Got the philodendron inside. Has a new leaf getting ready to open up. Bird's nest fern, you get it. I've been I've been moving some things around. I was gonna go outside, but my, what's wrong? Why won't my, there we go. What was that? The gorilla cart still loaded up those things all going into the garage and i'm going to move a few more things originally i had said in that last video that things like the tie over here that that's something that i would just lay on the ground put a frost cloth over that's at 38 33 it's only five degrees but that's much colder there's a chance of frost even so a situation like this where i'm like well i'm not going to move everything in just for one night because it's, it's the weather forecast after tonight looks beautiful it's supposed to get up into the 70s there's a critter over here making a very odd noise i can't where's that coming from i feel like i'm about to be startled or scared by something is that just the pump so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to frost cloth things oh you know i have the plants already put into sections so i just need to go get some frost cloth in years past i had a bunch of my own that i just used to get from farm tech online you could order it in different weights which was nice because the different weights had like varying levels of protection but now i can just go to the store and buy it which is nice back in the day that wasn't an option can't pick out the weight but that's all right I looked online and one of the hardware stores says that they have the regular just like 12 by 8 frost blankets in stock and some bags i'm like well i kind of need a bunch of both of those so i figure over into the hardware store maybe get to see some color on the trees things are starting to turn in certain areas and then come back and just start covering stuff up here tonight what the crap? Did it like rain mud yesterday? I had drained your trees. Oh, that's better. I didn't get that. I mean, the hood's still a mess, but at least I can see through the glass. There it is. Look at that. Some fall color starting to show through. It is so early. I feel like never see color on the trees until like, I don't know, probably mid to late October or something like that. Okay, this isn't that colorful. Look over there, fall color. There's some fall color. Talk about a beautiful day. I'm glad. It would have been nice just to go out for a drive, even if I didn't need to go by Lowe's and get that frost cloth material. It's just, it's so nice out. Kind of chilly, but still got those nice blue skies, the little clouds and the hint of color on the trees. There we go. There's some kind of some color. Excuse me. Excuse me. Stop. They were talking about feral pigs and then they somehow transitioned into politics. One nice thing about the fall, you can take the wet rags, put them right in the pocket and they don't dry out. Zip that up and ready to go. All I see are mums. Probably not going to be a big plant experience here. Um, um, really? I'm not surprised by this. I don't know why I'm acting surprised. It's earlier every year. Halloween started in August this year. It's fine. Whatever makes people happy. I actually, I gotta get on top of tree shopping. I've needed to buy a new tree for like the past three years, but every single time I go to get them, I wait until like November. It's too late, they're usually sold out. And they're not like one of those things where you can wait till after Christmas to get them because there's never any available. So I figured I'd have a gander real quick. Really, I'm hiding. This, it is so crowded and the music is really loud. So I was like, hey, let me show some plants. You can't even, I can't even do it. It. I'm trying to stay away from the people and there's people everywhere. Look at the sad euphorbia. This is an enterophora. If this had been watered, that would be a great buy. It'd be a big beautiful plant. But it, no, it's, it's not looking very good. Tons and tons of succulents. Ooh, look at the ZZ plant. So trendy. Who doesn't love a ZZ plant? Oh, that's not a ZZ plant. It's a Sansevieria. This is the wrong label. Oh my god. 
so pretty. I swear, in a previous life, I was either a lava lamp or a disco ball. I see a rainbow tree. I'm not gonna subject you guys to me trying to find a Christmas tree in October. I'll do that on my own. Ooh, these are cute. Right, here's a quick shot. Look, house plants. So many, so pretty. They have a whole bunch of the Dracania Rickies. And they're looking really nice too. They're so pretty. That's fun. Those are starting to become more common, which is nice. Always good to see some new flavors around with the plants. Pleasantly surprised with the mum selection. Like they're still just regular mums, but the flowers on some of these are really big and nice. Like look at how big these flowers are. Does it want to show you? There you go. Nice seeing some variety aside from just the regular pink, orange, white mums. Oh, they got some big old orange chunks over here too. Nice big flowers instead of just those tiny little basic mum flowers. Why on earth are they freshly stocked up on gardenias? These aren't hardy here. There are some that are more hardy, like this one's good to zone seven, it says right there, but um, no. It even says it's an annual for zone six and but why? That doesn't make any sense. Growers are scrambling, trying to keep people stocked up. I mean, they're cute. It's a cute gardenia, but again, just don't understand why it's with the perennials. Jeez, why are you screaming? I've been doing some digging over the last few weeks, which doesn't say much. I was about to say, anytime I go to a nursery, I haven't been to very many, but I'm trying to keep my eyes peeled for various evergreens with interesting large foliage that would be tough enough to keep in pots during the winter time. I have plenty of ideas, but I also want to keep it on the cheap. They have a bunch of, of these um, Eliangas here. They've had these all season, so I'm thinking, I bet these will go on clearance because nobody's bought any of them. They're only hardy to zone six, so if they're gonna go on pots, I'd rather they be hardy to zone five. But I'm going to need just a few things this year to help kind of spruce the patio up during the winter when everything else is all dead and ugly, dormant, I should say, just to make it a little bit more of a nice place to hang out because I have to do all the socializing outdoors. You know, these are cute, the little giant thujas. Love those. You know, things like hollies and boxwoods, those are always options and the various little spruces. But it's like, you know, that's just what I see everywhere all the time. So it'd be nice to have something a little bit different, but what I will probably be doing is uh, waiting for things to go on clearance and just get whatever's cheapest, just that like there's a little bit of color around the tables outside. I haven't seen this frost cloth anywhere. I'm going to check the website again because sometimes it'll say like where it is. It said that they have it, but I don't, I don't see it. Maybe it's back there with like the barrier fabrics. Yeah, I eventually found someone and told them where the website said they were. And she said, that's not where they were. Showed them to me. They're up at the register. So I found the frost blankets. And then I asked about the bags. They have like bags. I think I already talked about it. And she insisted that she said, no, no, we don't have them. And I was like, okay. Well, it says they're in Bay 35. And she goes, no, no, I just checked. We don't have them. Well, looks like you're wrong. Eh, good to be home. I love when I come home or when I'm in the driveway and I get to see those beautiful, great big, bold leaves all hanging out together in the different colors. It's such a beautiful little tropical rainbow. Rainbow that consists of two colors. Just It's just red and green. I'm home, pumpkin. I'm finally home. I missed you, but what you been doing? Hello, Toby. Hello, Senor Toby. You want to go outdoors? So much enthusiasm. Come on. We got plants to protect. Getting dark so early. I mean, I know that that's normal. That's what happens this time of year, but I just, I don't like it. Gonna go offload the first round of plants into the garage and come back with those frost cloths and start getting things covered up and I might move some more things in. You know the drill. We kind of went over this last week. What are you stuck on? Why won't you move? Is it the dog bed? You're a gorilla cart. You can't go over a dog bed. Okay, so it just it just got dark out of nowhere, so y'all missed out on the action of throwing big woven bags over the plants. Some over here, some over the table, and it's just you get it. It'll help keep the frost off of them. I would have just used old sheets, but I don't I don't have a surplus of old sheets laying around, so everything by the pool should be okay. It's a warm body of water that should protect them. I don't think it's actually going to get that cold. There's really conflicting forecasts. I mean, it's going to get cold. I'm not sure if it's going to get frost cold, but better safe than sorry. It's so easy just to get the sheets on top of the plants. May as well do it. And I'm going to walk around and do some more gathering. One thing, the plants are so dry because I turned the sprinklers off. I think you saw that in last week's 
video and it just hasn't really been that warm so i haven't been watering very much so frost or not some of the plants aren't gonna be looking very good tomorrow so i'm gonna spend a good amount of time watering it's supposed to be like i think 82 in two days this is brief it shouldn't end up being too detrimental to anything you know, look see oh this mom is so thirsty just hold on one more night you get a big drink tomorrow oh fire it feels so nice it has really cooled off out here i went through finished this up for the most part i realized i didn't even talk about the stuff i got so i got these protection bags which not really a bag not at all. Talk about that more in a minute. And then just regular sheeting. I prefer to order these things in bulk and cut my own pieces, but this was just last minute and it worked. These are medium weight, so they'll provide a little bit of extra protection. The thing with these so-called bags, they're just big circles with a drawstring in them. And the drawstring, it doesn't even work. I put this over the Busy, over my Bismarck Palm, and I like got actual rope burn from trying to pull the cord enough to get tension on the other side and I never even got all the tension so I'll probably be returning these all of the other bags I've used in the past like actually had seams on them so they fit over your plants they weren't just a tablecloth with a drawstring in them so those are helpful because I needed something for a few extra plants but they're not at all what I thought they were it's an eight foot bag eight foot diameter bag so I should have surmised some things from that. But I got a whole bunch of those while I was at Lowe's. So I was like, hey, that would be nifty for the windmill palms on the front porch. If like we just have a few days where it's kind of cold, but not cold enough to pull them into the house, then, you know, throw a bag over them. But that's not, no, those don't count. I'll be using different bags. I have other bags in my attic right now that I use for, I don't know if you, you're not gonna be able to see, but I have needle palms planted over there. And I couldn't, I can't go up in the attic right now, the ladder and everything. So I was like, well, this will do. And it, it kind of does. But not to the extent that I want it to. So I'll be finding different frost bags. And I think I have everything else out here. There's only one more plant that I know I forgot about. And that's I have another stromanthe down at the other end of the pool there. And I think should be good. This should be everything. And this should be good. It's good enough. You know, I know there's still like the big palms and all of those things. Most of what's out here can take a little bit of cold overnight. And they should be fine. It's being a little bit extra cautious here with the claws. Why not? Yeah, so now it's just a matter of waiting till morning and seeing how things look. I highly doubt anything is going to look bad. It should be fine. There is always the option. This is going to sound weird since I've talked about keeping plants dry when it's going to be cold. But if it's going to be a, like a really unexpected freeze, you can do a light misting over the plants. And I know it sounds weird, but that coating of water on the foliage can help actually keep the frost off. They do that with orange groves sometimes. I don't think it's necessary, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna hope for the best. Hey, dead pine trees, those light up nicely at nighttime. Good morning, pumpkin. What is that? Those are the tornado sirens. Where are those going off? Everything got moved in last night, at least everything that I felt needed to be moved in so the counters are very full. I don't mind it though. It's kind of fun having some of the plants in the kitchen. This one does not want to focus. I, at the last minute, remembered the Dracania Draco. Like, yeah, that's not worth running the risk. Toby's outside barking. He's like, excuse me, you let me out. Aren't you coming with me? I'm coming. Excuse me. Well, you got to get back. I can't come out if you're in the way. Hey, from what I can tell, everything looks okay. I mean, I can't tell what's going on underneath the bags yet. I haven't lifted those, but the things that aren't under the, blah, blah, the things that aren't under the bags, tongue tied there. They're looking okay. Can you even see them? The sun's on my screen, I can't tell. If the impatiens weren't touched by it, then it wasn't that bad. Although the sun impatiens are a little bit more cold tolerant than just regular impatiens, they still have a response to the colds. Yeah, I'm not seeing any kind of damage. I really didn't think there would be. And I'm not going to be able to go over here because having a geyser moment. But from what I can tell, it looks okay. Palm tree got blown over that's all right go ahead have yourself a soak it's fine heck that water probably feels fantastic i can feel the heat coming off of it just walking past it oh there are some thirsty plants out here I'll come over here open the sprinkler system back up because like i mentioned just a minute ago i think it was just a minute ago it's gonna be back up into the 70s and low 80s after today so we can go ahead and resume watering and get things happy and hydrated again. Oh, I forgot to the Sansip. Well, it's all right. It worked out. It's okay. Have a peek under sheet one. Oh, there's a coleus on the ground. That probably just got knocked over while I was doing some other things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Looks good. Now, who knows what they'd look like if I hadn't covered them, but I covered them and they look okay. Not the big croton. Yep. Fine. Everything's fine. Oh, this is exciting for you, isn't it, Toby? 
Toby doesn't like toys, but he loves blankets and sheets and towels. And last night when I was trying to do this, it was like the most excitement I've seen out of this dog in a long time. Oh boy, oh boy, Toby, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, go on. You can go, where'd you go? Toby, where'd you go? Yeah, good boy, Toby. Okay, son, right behind me. This is gonna be backlit, I'm sorry. I did debate with some of these, just leaving these on for one more day. If it weren't for the fact that I need to water, I'd go ahead and do that. I think this one I'll just kind of leave, yeah, like partially ajar, because it's still supposed to get down to 48 tonight. It's been colder than that and they were fine, but this is just gonna like help warm them back up. It's nice and toasty under there. So some of them I'm just going to leave for right now. Maybe just that one. So I have to peel back some more of these to get the watering done. Come in here and check on the uh, Bismarckia palm underneath the uh, bag. It's not really a bag, the circle with a bogus drawstring in it. Yeah, looks okay. Looks fine. Kind of a relief. I wasn't that concerned, but you just never know. Okay, everything's been watered for the most part. Things can get pretty toasty underneath these frost cloths, underneath these blankets when the sun's on them, so I left that end open, and I might actually go in there and give this section one more water. I don't know what I'm telling you. Nobody cares. I watered plants. It's not that exciting. And I spent a little while cleaning off my lens, because I noticed in my last few videos there's like a spot in the corner, I can't see it on my viewfinder, but once everything's up on my computer, I can see it. So I cleaned my lens, my sensor, everything. Hopefully that's gone now. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like those tiny little dots are really hard to find. It's nerve wracking. I do not enjoy cleaning the sensor on the camera. Let's hope that's gone. If not, is what it is. Who's tired of looking at this mess? I know I am. It's time to handle this. These are the Maui Gold Colocasias. They started to do their die back when we had some cool nights in early September and I went ahead and I was like well I'm just going to kind of let them do their thing so that all the nutrients that are being stored up inside the foliage can make their way back down into the bulb. I don't even know what kind of bulb this particular colocasia is going to produce. I say colocasia. You know what I mean. Elephant ears. But I know about the Maui gold they tend to have a really tight clumping habit to them so uh, they might be one of those ones that takes a couple years to really store up enough energy to be like dug up and stored dormant. I don't know, we're gonna find out, but that's one of the reasons I've been kind of just letting them look kind of crummy over these last few weeks so that they can get all that stuff back down into the roots and everything. But with another warm snap coming up, it's probably gonna trigger them to start growing again. So I just figured if that's going to be the case, I'm gonna come in here and just clean this up i'm probably going to take off most of the foliage if they want to put out new leaves that's cool if not then that's fine it was nice we had a great summer they looked beautiful but i'm tired of looking at the mess well i'd like to say that this is better it's still bugging me but it's nice not having all that growth hanging over everything i didn't enjoy that it made the space feel really small i'll hose all this junk out of here in a day or two when it warms up. Makes more sense to be out here hosing things off when it's 80, not when it's 65. The original plan here was to go ahead and let these die, I mean you just heard it, I was gonna let them die back and then I'll lift them and store them dormant, but I just, I don't, I really don't want to look at this for the next several weeks. I, I don't think I can do it. And I have to run by the nursery and pick up some more of that, of this coconut based potting mix that I really like to use so I can get to repotting some of the aeroids. So there might be something there that will stick out to me that would be good for winter time. Otherwise, what I might do here is pull these out at some point in the next week or so and uh, throw some kales and cabbages in there. The thing is, I would prefer to do that all at one time, get this area set up for winter in one single swoop. Maybe I'll wait. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's not like this is I can't. I can't. That's going to drive me crazy. Next year, I don't want to predict things too far into the future, but I know these didn't work. They got way too big. I left this one leaf because I was like, what are you looking at? You, that's the wrong direction, stupid. The sun's over there. But next year, caladiums and impatiens, that would make more sense in here. The bird of paradise, those will probably go somewhere else completely because it's just, there's not enough sun over here for them anymore. They get this weird wonky growth, they lean forward. I don't like that appearance. I like for them to be shorter and more stout. So they need more sun for that. And I know exactly where I would put them next year. So that won't be a problem. It might end up being if I find evergreens to keep in these planters, like I talked about at the beginning of the video, that I would just leave those 
all year. That would make more sense. It's not like beautiful and tropical, but it's more practical. And I can fill in around those with all kinds of annuals and other tropicals and things like that. Like just because there might be like an arborvitae or something sticking up in the back of each one of these doesn't mean I can't tropicalize the front of the pots. Again, that can wait till next time. I don't even worry about that right now. Okay, next up though, the next area that's gotta go down, the vegetable garden, if I could even call it that. I just let it go. I did not tend to this at all this year. The amazel basil back here, looking very thirsty. The poblano over there also just, nah, not doing its thing. Like I said, I really haven't done anything over here, so they look terrible. And things haven't been watered, so they look extra terrible right now because they're dry. I've pretty much gotten the final harvest out of everything. I don't think I'm going to take the amazel basil inside this year or the poblano because anything that comes inside i need to really want it inside if it's going to take up space from other things and i just i don't use that much basil i don't need an entire basil bush and this particular poblano that i'm growing just has the teeny tiniest little peppers on it the peppers on this are just they're just so little for a poblano i think it's great for cutting up and putting into salads something like that but i like a nice big thick long juicy poblano so it can go i'll do some other type of something edible inside this year just probably not what i was using last year this is all just such a mess i'm over it i'm gonna cut it back i'll leave the peppermint for now and the strawberries but everything else nah don't need them uh, apparently i was wrong there's still a bunch of things over there these are branches i accidentally broke off while i was starting to pull things up so i'm gonna go ahead and hold off on that for another week there's still a lot going on down there with the habaneros and it's not pretty you don't need to look at it still several good sized peppers that need to go ahead and ripen for probably another week or so oh sorry tomatoes oops i just figured 35 degrees it's like well that's probably gonna do it but apparently not oh it is a new day the plants are back outside it is incredibly warm like 87 something like that maybe 88 feels fantastic got my coca bop loaded up here into the gorilla carts and start doing some repots i'm really liking this mix it is kind of pricey though that's like my only complaint. Maybe that's just the nursery I'm getting it from. It's like $42 a bag. Now, granted, it is a giant bag, and uh, the way it's designed is you can just cut the top off and put your plant right in the center. Like if you want to grow uh, tomatoes hydroponically, I don't think tomato growers are really their exact market, but it's good stuff. Coconut base, contains the right amount of moisture, drains really well. And with this, for some of my aeroids, I don't really think I'm gonna add much to it. I have liked the airiness of it just on its own. So now, I can go ahead and start getting some things repotted. I'm only gonna do a few in this video. It's one of those things that just gets redundant after a while. I have this Monstera here. It's in this tiny little pot with a totally useless support stake on it. And this thing, it grew and grew and grew this summer. I mean, I would say it quadrupled in size possibly even more than that because it was only I want to say its top growth was probably right around here maybe this one right here might be one of its older growth <laughs> these palm trees I keep thinking there's bugs in my hair you get the point it grew a lot so I'm going to go ahead and bump this up into this container it has a nice solid ridge on it so it'll be easy to lift and move around it has the holes on the sides and not just in the bottom which I really like for better drainage I know it's not pretty but I don't really care. I need things to be lightweight and easy to move around this year. I always drop the container into a decorative pot if the appearance starts to be bothersome. The only issue that I'm having here is the support system. So I have these planks here. These are cork planks and uh, I like them a lot. I think it'd be really cool to get something growing up them, but that's nowhere near big enough for this monstera here. So that's not going to work. And I didn't really prepare to make any kinds of other poles. I think I'm just going to use this piece of bamboo that I had around my garage. This is from an old bamboo grove that I had, not really a grove, but I had a big clump of Philostachys nigra years ago. And it just kind of, it just stopped coming back on its own. It's not black. I, maybe this isn't from my nigra. I'm not sure. It's skinny. So it's not like the plant's going to root onto it, but that's okay. Maybe I can order some moss or something and get that wrapped around it later but for now this is just it's gonna have to do because it's what i have and one thing that has always irked me with any time i have to put a plant on a support 
particularly something that's going to be as tall as this one. That they get kind of wonky and wobbly and off balance. So I'm gonna wire this to the sides of the pot. The only disadvantage to doing that is that the plant won't be centered, but that's all right. I don't really care. So I think I'll probably do uh, one wire here another in the middle. Maybe I should do one on the bottom too. I feel like busting out my drill just to pop a few holes in a plastic pot. I think that just using my snippers should do the trick. I'm using really thin wire. Okay, so I'm gonna get my pole set in here. That is just about right. I probably should have put those holes a little bit closer together, but this should still work. I'm just using anodized wire, the same stuff I use in my bones eye. It's nice and sturdy and it tends to not rust. At least it shouldn't rust. If it does rust, then it wasn't actually anodized properly. Forgot to remove the price tag from the plant that was in here before. That's all right. Oh, well. Definitely didn't need to cut this much wire. That was a waste of wire. There we go, that's pretty sturdy. Should do the trick, as long as I can remember to never actually pick this up by the pole, because that'll come out of there. Okay, the only way to get around that would be to actually drill a hole down here in the bottom of the support here, and then wrap that wire around the outside. I just honestly, I don't really feel like doing all that. And the bamboo's already split down there, so I feel like drilling a hole through it would just probably crack it. <sighs> Fine, I'll go get my drill. Okay, complete and total change of plans. That bamboo stake, I went ahead and I held it up against that monstera, and it was like the exact same size. So there's no point in that. The, the plant will have no room to grow up that pole, so why even bother? I grabbed the last wooden stake I have laying around here. And I see I forgot to take the sticker off of it. I'll get that off when I pull it down. That way the plant will have some room to grow. Be pointless to do this otherwise. I put a brick in the front of the pot to counterbalance it. That stake is so tall, the whole thing just wants to flop over. I was just going to like try and put some gravel in here and have that loaded towards the front but I don't really have enough. Anytime I've had any of my Vandacious orchids or anything that's like the Monsteras or even Pothos, they really actually seem to enjoy these bricks and like I have a brick wall back here that gets wet and they grab right on so I think that this should be fine. I'll just leave it in there. As long as there aren't any air pockets, I don't see a problem with it. It's going to help keep the entire thing from wanting to fall over. And then the only other thing I did, which is what I cut away for, I did go ahead and drill a hole in the side of the stake and ran a wire through it. So that way, if this gets lifted, tugged, or pulled, it'll take the pot with it and the whole thing won't just slide out. That would be a tremendous waste of time. I'd be very frustrated by that if somebody were to try and pick this up by the stake, which they shouldn't do, but you know, I have people on helping me who don't necessarily know these things and then the whole thing were to come out. That would just make this entire thing a big, tremendous waste of time. Okay, and now, the easy part, the fun part. Let's actually go ahead and get the plant put in here. I want to forget to get that soil behind that brick. I don't know how well this is even rooted into here. I'm going to minimize damage to those roots. So I'm going to be very gentle here. There we go. That looks... Okay, I prefer it be on a moss pole, but hey, working with what I got here. The only thing about this brick, I really probably should have taken a chisel and split that in half so it could lay on the bottom because that could cause like moisture issues as far as certain areas drying out faster than others. I don't think that that's going to be a problem, especially with this coke bop, the cocoa, is it cocoa or coke? Whatever, the coconut based soil, the way it dries is usually pretty even and consistent. That could be an issue. I don't know. I'll keep an eye on it and make sure to water it the way that I need to in order to keep it proper and healthy. Right, T Tuck, where are you going? Do you say hi? Oh no, Tucker's got, okay, no, he needs to go to the bathroom. Oh, and I couldn't find my twine, so I had to rely on nifty little zip ties. They are on very loose. They need to have some give to them. Zip ties, that's kind of a harsh thing to use to hold the vine down. It could easily squeeze the plant and cause some problems. I'll be sure to swap those out with something more soft and gentle as soon as I can. Okay, and next up I have these teeny tiny little very sad looking colocasias that need to be potted up. This is the colocasia pharaohs mask. I ordered these over the summer from Brian's Botanicals. They showed up basically dead. They're actually, I know they look horrible, but in comparison to how they looked when they arrived in the mail, I have much more confidence in these than I did in what was sent to me. See, their growths are much more, did I say growths? Their growths, <laughs> I can't talk right now. The growth that they have is much more stable and sturdy, but the foliage they have on them right now looks like total garbage. I had debated whether or not to even bother with these. I was kind of like just gonna consider it a wash and let them go. I was like, okay, well, I'll try again next year. Hopefully Brian's Botanicals will have them in stock and 
I can just get some new ones. But one of y'all, Carl, sent me a screenshot of somebody selling these for like a hundred dollars. For very small plants. I was like, okay, maybe this won't be a plant that I can just replace next year. So I'll go ahead and just toss them all together in a new soil mixture. Uh, this is that the same coconut base one I was using before. That already has some earthworm castings in it. I did add just a little sprinkle of some compost into that to help bring them back that's why i went ahead and put them all in one pot just because i don't expect them to do much this winter i just want to get them through the winter and then have them around to be able to use in the ground next year give this a drink help burp that soil get any air bubbles out of there sometimes this coconut base stuff tends to deflate quite a bit all right that'll do i had put a little bit extra in there so that's probably right about where i want it i don't want it too high because then they'll rot i had mentioned in one of my other videos it might have been this video i've been editing this one all week long along with some other videos so my brain's a little bit scrambled as to what's happened where but i talked about how in my growth space i'm kind of considering every single square foot to be very precious i don't want to have a bunch of plants in there if i'm not like absolutely crazy about them that's another reason i went ahead and just put all three of them in one pot because like i said space is limited i don't want them taking up too much space i'm gonna try and cut through this with my rusty outdoor scissors adding wicking cord to this the plants that i used this on last year did wonderfully and it saved me so much time with watering yeah and if in a few months it looks like they're flourishing and that pot's not gonna do i can always pull them and put them into something bigger not a big deal and back to the whole entire wanting a lot of space thing it's because of that that i've decided to go ahead and i'm gonna pack some more plants in with other plants kind of make some more mixed planters to have in the grow space this winter. We all have things to pull and play from during the winter months indoors, things that I can't normally find at the nurseries during the winter, like a uh, creeping Jenny. It's not something I ever see around. I'm going to drop this into this aquatic planter with the stromanthi that Pam from uh, at Pam's Planty Things sent me when I was healing from my surgeries. I to take some roots off of there. I was very, very pleased with how well the creep or not the Creeping Jenny, how well the Stromanthes did floating around in my little pool pond thing in my grow space last winter. That was just sort of a last minute decision to drop that plant into the floating planter. Because I think, as we all know, the Stromanthi, the Trio Star, any form of Calathea, really, they can be a pain in the butt inside just because they like so much water. And I got sick of watering the one that I had, so I tossed it in one of these little floaty devices, and I didn't have to touch it for the rest of the winter while it was inside. It just did its thing. There we go. So now I'll have some Creeping Jenny to pull from and play with, assuming that it does okay in the grow space. I don't know how well it's going to do. Even though Creeping Jenny can go from low to high highlight indoors i don't know I'm, it, they, it may not get enough light but regardless figure why not just toss it in there give it a shot see what happens another plant that i'm going to go ahead and toss in here that i don't know how well it's going to do but i don't feel like making space for it in the grow room is this Diefenbachia. isn't it pretty look at that foliage it's so nice. This is, it's just a camouflage, which isn't like a rare or hard to find variety. It's just, this one's just particularly very white. And that'll probably change as it grows. And as cute as I think that this plant is, and as much as I like it, it's just not one where I love it enough to devote any shelf space to it on the grow shelves. That's why it's going in here. We'll just see what happens. There we go. That's good enough. It'll do. The main difference here is that this is a plant that, though it can take consistent moisture as long as it drains really well, it doesn't necessarily need it like the Stromanthi does or the Creeping Jenny. As long as the water's oxygen rich and has some flow to it, you can do a lot of plants, like virtually anything, if, as long as you have the right media and the right setup going. Almost any plant can go hydroponic, which is essentially what this is. It's a hydroponic setup, but I don't know. We will see. And then back to the lighting situation. This may end up filtering too much light from that Stromanthi, so I'll keep an eye on it. If it's not working out, I'll just pull it out. And then back to this one, I also have this Tretiscantia down here. I picked up early spring. The variety is called Cartouze Giant, and it is supposed to have really big, more bold foliage than your typical purple heart plant. I can't really speak to that. I wasn't terribly impressed with it, honestly. I mean, it just kind of seems like a regular purple heart plant to me. But I didn't have the opportunity to get it planted up into really bright light, which would have gone ahead and uh, 
reduce the internodal spacing there and probably maybe it would have been more bushy and then shown off that foliage a little bit better. I don't know. The main thing is I want to make sure I can get it through winter and I don't see that happening in this tiny little pot. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that here in the base of the pot that I put this Monstera in. The fun thing about potting these things up is they just basically fall apart when you touch them. You can just snap them off stick them down in the soil and boom, I'll have new plants. So I'm not even that concerned about getting this one through the winter. I just need to get a whole bunch of little babies rooted. That's probably a bit much. That needs to be smaller. It'll root better if there's not quite as much going on there. Ooh, there's a nice big one. This has some great growths on it. I can take these off, take that one off. I have that one right there. No, well, maybe not that one. I broke the leaf on it. How well they'll root in this coconut base mix? Yeah, I don't really know. The earthworm castings will help an awful lot, but this also dries really quickly, which is okay if it's nice and toasty outside and you don't want the plant to be saturated and soaking wet because that can rot the plant. But when trying to establish cuttings, not always the best way to go. So the soil that dries quickly isn't necessarily ideal, but it has those earthworm castings in there which are great for getting root growth. Thing is, even if that doesn't work out, I have a whole bunch of them over in my waterfall filter. All right, well, not a ton, but there's a nice established colony of them. They're rooted into that filter bag. I can't even get them out, which I'm actually, I'm gonna have to figure something out with that because if I don't, then they'll die. After we get that filter back out to clean things up, the media gets really mucky. Then I have this little chunk that came off my pink princess. I could throw that in there too. Lightly set that on top of the soil, see what happens. I was just going to throw it away, so may as well stick it in there and see what happens. I did find my twine, so I'm going to go through and get that fixed up. I really didn't like having zip ties on there, but it, I had to use something or else it could have fallen and broken. Really don't want that to happen. And that would be bad. That's something definitely do not want happening. Thing did so much growing this year that that would suck to have it snap. I mean, I could just reroute it. These things root so easily. Oh, and earlier when I was pointing out where the original growth was, I don't know why I didn't just, it's right there. That's where the original growth was on this. And then it, that died off and all came out from there. So it was like, what, six inches maybe? And now this is probably a little bit over four feet tall, but that is with, again, extreme spacing between the nodes. And I gave this plant a decent amount of light. There's a whole story behind this Monstera. I don't know how much of it I feel like telling on the YouTube, because anytime you get talking about rare plants and hybrids, the people get upset sometimes. And I don't really feel like dealing with that, but because of basically there's a little bit of confusion as to the parentage of this particular Monstera, long story, I had to kind of play around with its growing conditions because one of the parents, one of the plants that's claimed to be part of the parentage of this plant likes more sun than just a straight up Adansonii. It's a whole thing. I'll have to wait until this plant gets much bigger and potentially puts on flowers, which who knows if that'll even happen, but I need those things before I can deduce much. I don't really trust the person who sold this to the person who then gifted it to me. That's the best way I can put that. I'm not trying to spill any tea or cause any drama. I think it needed more light and see how far apart that growth ended up being space so I'll be giving it brighter light this winter when it's inside and then uh, this guy down here I'll probably pop into a hanging basket I'm going to have more room for hanging baskets this year I hope we will see because I want to I've talked about this for years and I want to actually make it happen this year I've been talking about putting some of my various pothos onto poles or instead of poles I'll be using these cork slabs for them so I'll have a few of those that won't be hanging like they typically would be in my grow space. And that's going to free up some more space for things to be hanging like this Tritoscantia down here. Amongst some other things, I'm just going to toss into hanging baskets so that they're up and out of the way. If they're hanging up from the ceiling, there's more room on the floor. I'm going to be packing things in tight this year. Hey, Tobes. I know it's exhausting having this beautiful weather, isn't it? I toyed around with the idea of moving my anthuriums into the planter that has that uh the one of the floating planters but i just i don't think there's room none of the floating planters i have are all that big so i don't yeah i don't that's not gonna fit you can see this is the one i planted up last year should have talked about this when i was talking about it five minutes ago it's all right it's a vlog that's the way i do things around here this is the one that i had in the growth space last year and it's done wonderfully it's put up a whole bunch of new growth from down below and I just, I haven't had to touch it. And how often can you say that about something like a Stramanthi? Not very often. So this is one of the potential pothos that I'd be putting onto a pole. They need to be repotted regardless. There's this one, I have a Manjula 
down there, and then there's another, uh, what is this, a marble queen down below. The Jesenia, which almost died last week, oops. And then I have the, geez, girl, you're growing like crazy. Then I also have the Cebu Blue inside. So uh, I think that do it, I might do about three of them. So they'll be sitting side by side on my shelves. You'll see when it all happens. It's hard to explain it when we're not actually in that grow space and I'm not taking y'all into the grow space until I have it set up this year. I'm gonna be filming that in its own video instead of spreading it out over several weeks like I usually do. We'll just be doing, maybe we'll do arts and crafts on the weekends and the vlogs. I don't know. I just, I always have people asking me for videos on setting up the grow space and I always have to say, well, it's kind of a several week long thing because I do it in little pieces. So this year I'm just, we'll just do it all in one sweep and then it'll get done that way. People can watch it that way. Where are you coming from? Is that, is it, where's, is it, is it going under there and going over there? I'm kind of blocked off here. I mean, not I could just pick this up and move it. Oh, yeah, that's just growing from underneath there. Okay. Where the heck is this trumpet vine coming from? It seems to be pretty happy over here. So this pothos has rooted itself into the ground. So it's going to be fun getting that one pulled up. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the newer ones that didn't need to be repotted as bad. I got this one in the springtime just because the foliage on it was already so big and so happy. I thought it might be likely to take off and climb and fenestrate a little bit earlier than some of my other ones. I don't really need it because I already have two other marble queens. This one up here I think is a snow queen. I can't say for sure. But regardless of any of that, I have several pothos that just need to be repotted because they're not they're not doing great in these tiny little pots anymore. Um, how did you do that? Okay, I have to put the camera down. <sighs> okay, there we go. That was like the last thing I wanted to do that I hadn't even mentioned was I wanted to get all the pothos ready to be moved and repotted. So I went ahead and got all the little roots and shoots and everything out of the ground. I mean, look at how much this had rooted into the ground. I was very happy. I really liked it over here. The variegation on this one is extremely inconsistent. I don't think I've ever had a Marble Queen that was this inconsistently variegated, but I don't really care about that. It's so pretty either way. I, it's fine. And then here's that one that I was saying is possibly a Snow Queen. See that? I mean, its foliage is more white than green. That's the only reason I say that. It was up there. He just thought I pulled it down. And then here's the Manjula. So these are at least down where I can get to them a little bit more easily and get them clean. I mean, look at it. They just really need to be repotted. They need new potting so badly. Whether or not I put them onto a stake or get them into new hanging baskets, either way, it's gotta get done. Like I was saying though, if I can get these into pots with a stake they can grow up, that's gonna free up ceiling space for more hanging plants. So I think I'm going to do that with at least a few of them. And now I'm going to get back to repotting. I still have lots of things to repot, but it's gonna be pretty redundant, basically what you've already seen. So hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Oh, did you go swimming, Toby? You get your swim on? Good boy, Toby. Aqua aerobics, great for senior canines. This is my next repotting project over here. I don't know why I'm really dreading repotting this plant. It's not that big a deal. I've repotted much bigger things before. You'd think I'd be excited to get that plant repotted. I've wanted to do it for such a long time. Okay, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna go. Lots of repotting to do. Next week, probably going to be doing even more repotting. So that's, that's what's going on out here right now. All right, thanks for hanging out while I just, you know, do all the gardening things. But of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye. Oh, that was the other point. I needed to <laughs> free up more space for hanging plants because I went a little bit nuts with the bromeliads this year. I have a lot of them and I moved them into hanging baskets. So now I need more space for it. It's a, you get it. Okay, bye, bye.